Morning everyone, uh, I'm Shannon and welcome to another video from Shenley's Creations. Uh, firstly, um, I'd like to apologise. Um, it's been quite some time before, uh, since sorry, since I made a video. Uh, look, since Christmas it's been uh, it's been pretty hectic. Um, I'm behind, I can't keep up and um, just doing what I've got to do. Uh, so unfortunately the, uh, the videos um, have, have come to a bit of a stop. Um, I'm starting to get ahead now, so um, yeah, we can get into a couple of videos and stuff like that. So, as you know, I also own Australian Soft Plastic Lure Supplies. Um, we've had a couple of uh, questions about uh, about the Plastisol that um, that we sell from uh, Bait Plastics, um, and uh, also a couple of questions about vacuum chambers. So um, today we're going to um, uh, we're going to show you uh, we don't that you don't need to use a vacuum chamber um, and uh, it's quite easy not to use one. So for today's video um, on vacuum chambers, I'm going to absolutely shake the living hell uh, out of uh, a liter of uh, Plastisol and then um, yeah, show you how to uh, to get rid of the little micro bubbles uh, without using a vac chamber. So um, yeah, should be interesting. Alright guys, so as you can see I've already filled up my uh, my one litre uh, Pyrex here and as you can see um, you can already see some uh, some bubbles forming there um, that's not a concern at the moment uh, yes by all means uh, you can put it in the vacuum chamber and get rid of those before you add anything before you start cooking um, but uh, as I stated this video is uh, all about not using a vacuum chamber and not needing to use one um, even for shop shop quality soft plastics um, that I put into the shops I don't use a vacuum chamber anymore um, so uh, it's very easy it's uh, it'll actually save you some time and um, I hope you've learned a lot so as we see um, we've got uh, a one liter here of uh, our bait plastics um, medium and as you can see hopefully uh, you can actually see the chemicals are separating, um, so over time, um, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe the heat stabilizers come to the top and the rest go to the bottom. Um, that's what I've been told anyway. So instead of shaking the absolute crap out of it, um, all you gotta do is just, you can even just roll it, roll it backwards and forwards. That will eliminate a lot of the bubble issues um, to start with. Um, so that's mixing up all the chemicals mixed in together and yes as most of you are aware you do have to uh, make sure that it's all mixed properly um, the other way is just backwards and forwards gently um, quite a few times and, uh, and that's also eliminating a bubble problem um, you won't see much on the bottom it's it's not a hard packing plastisol so you don't need to shake it to get that stuff off the bottom um, by all means there is stuff on the bottom but if you just continue to do this rolling it um, or if you've got drums you can uh, just sort of place it on its side leave it on its side for five minutes put it on another side and do all those angles um, once you've got it in a, a drum as such like this one here um, I a lot of people and I use a drill and it's just a, uh, a paint stirrer uh, put it on the drill and um, you can stir it that way um, instead of shaking the absolute crap out of the drum so uh, I find that very effective and um, but I'm going to show you today um, the uh, I'm going to stir like crazy and still not use a vacuum chamber so um, fingers crossed it works it works every other time for me so uh, yeah we'll go back over to the bench and um, we'll uh, get into it alrighty so as I said we've got our uh, one litre plastisol uh, in the medium 212 um, uh, for this one we're just going to do some uh, hot pink or as I call it sexy pink um, that's all we're going to do for this one I, since using baked plastics, I I add my colour and my glitter. Obviously, glitter is after cooking. I also add my colour after after cooking as well. 
the main reason for that is I just make sure that all these chemicals in here uh, are mixed in well together. I find, and I've done this myself, that if you add your color before, because you've got a uh, recipe, I've got recipes, but I still do it afterwards, um, I find that I haven't mixed it properly. Um, and I'll hopefully the camera will be able to pick this up and uh, show you exactly what I mean. But um, we'll heat this up for about six or seven minutes and then uh, we'll come back and we'll start the stirring process. So we've been here for six minutes, um, six minutes in my microwave anyway. Um, it's, it's definitely not ready, but um, I like to give it a stir and just get those, uh, get those chemicals uh, mixing in nicely. So there's a few different things you can do. Uh, you can use the good old uh, stainless steel butter knife, um, front or back, doesn't matter. Uh, or you can use the uh, kebab stick. Um, I don't like to use the kebab stick, uh, the stainless steel kebab stick, because uh, it to me it just takes a lot longer. And obviously, once you get how to actually have bubbleless plastic sole uh, without using a vacuum chamber or with a vacuum chamber, it really doesn't matter how hard. So, but as I said, this video I'm going to go hard with the stirring as I normally do, um, and. Uh, yeah, so uh, you know this is this is still going to take a little bit longer. So it's probably only not even oh maybe halfway there. Um, but yeah, as you can see, that's all stirring in, starting to form together, um, and it's just helping that process at the end. So we'll put this in for a uh, for another um, oh, two minutes. And then we'll be pretty right, I reckon. Okay, so we're going for another further two minutes. Um, and this is exactly what I want to show you. So you can see, as it starts to cook a bit more, you can see all those little micro bubbles. Um, now, micro bubbles is good to see. Oh, well, look, sorry. It's not good to see, but it's better than big, bulky, like oh, that one right there. Micro bubbles are so easy to get out. Um, and it uh, doesn't take much at all. So I'll give this a stir. I still don't think we are fully where I want to be. Um, so as, you, as I stir, look at all those little micro bubbles. Now, you may go, oh shit, that's a lot of bubbles. Uh, it is, but um, I don't have an issue with that. And I can, I can easily get them out, as I'll show you. So we're not far off. Um, now, also, I'm down to about three litres left in my drum. Um, so it's been stirred quite a number of times. And this is another reason for a lot more bubbles than I would if I had it at a full drum. Um, but as I said, don't be concerned about that problem because uh, I'll show you how to get rid of them without using a vacuum chamber. Right, so we're going to stir in our colour. Um, and our colour, I oh, you have even forgotten how to do this one. Bear with me. Okay, so a litre of plastic soil, 80 drops. You might say, gee, that's a lot of drops, but it doesn't take long. Okay, here's our 80 drops. So we'll make this that beautiful, beautiful pink it's turning into. And that knife is very bloody hot. Okay, so I probably should have put it back in for another 30 seconds, but not to worry. We'll stir this in nice. And as I said, guys, you can't really get a lot harder than the way, how I'm stirring, sorry. Um, it's stirring quite vigorously. Um, so you can't really stir look and also a lot of people fold their plastic as i'm doing um that sort of reduces the bubbles a little bit um but as i said i have no issues going extremely extremely hard and showing you how to get these thousands and thousands of little micro bubbles out okay so i'm going to put that back in for 30 seconds and then I'm going to stir it again to make sure we are up to where we need to be. So actually put that in for 45 seconds 
um, just to make sure. Um, guys, a lot of a lot of people say, oh, now we're talking Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit here. Um, a lot of people go, oh, 310, that's the, that's the maximum. Uh, 320, I uh, won't go any higher than 320, right? Guys, at the moment, this is probably sitting about 370, um, and there's no issues with it whatsoever. Uh, I've had this stuff up to 430 uh, by mistake, and it has not burnt. So um, a lot of plasticizers out there on the market will actually burn at uh, 400. Um, I was a little surprised this got to 430 and didn't burn, and that just shows you the quality um, of the plasticizer. Right, okay, so we've got it up to where we want to be. So all we do now, we've finished our stirring. All we do now is put it back in the microwave. We put it on for 20 seconds, and then we leave it sit for one minute. Um, and then I'll uh, come back and I'll uh, show, you exactly, show you exactly what it's done after that. Waiting for that to, go, um, to sit for the minute. Uh, our molds. So I have put these on a hot plate already. Um, unfortunately, because I've been talking, um, I've, I've left them way too long. And that is that one there is untouchable. It is extremely hot. Um, look, it, it won't matter. It just takes longer to cool down. Um, that's probably where you want to be. Um, yeah, those three are where you want to be. And I've also, uh, I have also warmed up the injector. So um, obviously I'm going to be shooting uh, multiples at the same time, so you don't want that um, plasticol uh, cooling down inside the, the injector. So we'll let that sit for a couple of minutes, and then uh, we'll come back and uh, we'll show you uh, the magic. All right, so as you can see, um, we've let it sit, and it started doing exactly what I wanted it to do. Um, for the video, I've pulled it out a little bit earlier just to show you, but uh, I'd leave that in there for another minute. Uh, look, my when I put my stuff, or when I used to put my stuff in the vacuum chamber, uh, it used to be about four minutes, so um, I'm actually knocking off about two minutes every time uh, doing it this way. So all you do, uh, you grab one of your stainless steel big spoons. Um, this is half a tablespoon. Um, and I've got a tablespoon one over there, blah, blah, blah. But um, all you do, you just push it over to the side and you can see they're all following each other, right? And you're just knocking off the top, okay? Now, it's really no different to a vacuum chamber where uh, it rises and they sit on the side of the jug um, to actually just doing this. Um, it's, it's really not a lot of wastage whatsoever, if any at all. Um, you, you're talking maybe one three inch plastic uh, wastage. Um, so you can go all out, you can fully scoop it. I don't normally, um, because the more you reheat it, they're gonna pop anyway. So um, it, it's, guys, it's that easy. You don't need to go out and spend money on a vacuum chamber. Um, by all means, uh, you can if you want, but um, as I said, all you gotta do is just scoop them off the top and um, we are all good. You know, so as you can see, you can see a little bit of a, a swirl, um, you know, very tiny bubbles. They're not even micro bubbles. They're even smaller than micro bubbles. Um, they'll just start popping himself as I put it back in the microwave. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and shoot um, our two 375s um, and I'll show you the finished product. Um, that uh, you won't see any bubbles in the uh, in the plastic. So also you can go underneath the top of the bubbles, um, and obviously by doing that, um, obviously the bubbles rise to the top. Um, so if you go underneath them, you won't also get bubbles. So um, that's another way to do it, but. Um, I find this way is just as good. Obviously I didn't have enough plastic for that one, so we'll make a mess here. Oop, not too bad there. All right, the top off guys, very important. Um, as that plastic starts to sink, you want more in there. There we go. So also guys, I've had a few questions about denting. 
Um, look, that's denting is the million dollar question. Um, I don't think you'll ever be able to get denting out of soft plastics in aluminium molds, uh, stone molds, or silicon molds. Um, I, me personally, probably one of these will have a dent in it. Um, to me, it's just hope for the best and cross your fingers. Um, do everything you're supposed to do, um, heating wise, um, pressure. If you if you've got a fast inject or slow inject. Do all those right things, and then it's still cross your fingers. Um, I, I don't think you'll ever get a, a, a perfect mould every time. Uh, if you do, I think you're full of shit. Um, I, I, I've even been told guys with shooting stars um, still have denting. I've also been told $100,000 machines um, that do their injecting for them uh, still get denting. Um, so I think it's just one of those things that happens with soft plastics and molds and I don't think anybody will ever be able to fix the problem. Um, so it's just a process of elimination. Uh, heat your molds up um, to temperature, heat your injector, making sure you're doing all that. Um, whether Each mold's different, whether you've got a fast inject, slow inject, uh, temperature, whether it's got to be 310 or 360 even. Um, it's just a process of elimination and then once you've eliminated all the problems then cross your fingers and hopefully every time um, you won't get any dents so as the plasticizer has been sitting there since I've been yakking about um, you can still see a few on the top so what I do now um, obviously I've got more to shoot um, and that's why I've done the leader um, just give it a, a bit of a stir um, and obviously if I had glitter in there, um, you got to get it off the bottom too. So the, the more I cook that, those bubbles will start to disappear. So um, yeah, we'll get this back in the microwave before it sets too quickly. If, if somebody's telling you you need a vacuum chamber, um, you, can, uh, you can tell them that they're extremely incorrect. Um, shop quality, as I said, uh, I didn't get four out of this one, but I did get three. Uh, and look, I just take it on the chin um, and keep going. Uh, it's as simple as that. There's no point getting uh, getting the shits about it. Uh, look, it, it happens. As I said, I don't think anyone will ever crack it. Um, and if people are, I'd be sort of asking questions of uh, how, because they're pretty damn good if they can get that done without uh, sort of denting or stuff like that. Um, so there you have it, guys. Um, no vacuum chamber. So um, I know a lot of guys that don't use a vacuum chamber. So um, there's proof that um, you don't need to, and it's quite easy not to use one. Yes, you get those micro bubbles, like any plasticizer on the market, um, but they're only tiny micros. They can uh, they can easily be taken out. Yeah, definitely with a vacuum chamber, but they can easily just be left for one minute, minute and a half in the microwave. Um, to uh, to rise and pop themselves, and uh, and and we're good. Um, so no need to fully go out and buy a five hundred dollar vacuum chamber or a three hundred dollar eBay special or whatever they are. Um, when you can just scoop them off the top, and at the end of the day, even using a vacuum chamber, you're going to have wastage. Um, so uh, I think it's actually less wastage just uh, scooping them off the top than it is putting it in the vacuum chamber. So um, yeah, that's. Uh, I hope this helps um, for those guys that think they definitely need a vacuum chamber because you don't. Um, and you know, especially especially those guys that um, are only making for themselves or their mates, they're not actually selling. Don't worry about it. Fish ain't going to care about a couple of bubbles. Um, it, it's the it's the ones that um, supply to shops and uh, you know that have a good customer base that um, uh, that I believe should be worrying about bubbles. Um, uh, I myself have a, you know I, I don't uh, like to sell anything with one bubble. Um, but uh, as I said, if you're only doing it for yourself or you're doing it for your mates and you're just getting your, your money back uh, for what it costs. Don't worry about it. If they don't care, fish aren't going to care. So what you shouldn't have to either. But um, look, guys, that's my opinion. Uh, there's no point uh, 
there's no point getting the shits about it. It happens. It will always happen. And um, yeah, I, I just, uh, if it doesn't work on that mold, I just pull that one or two plastic out and I just go again. It's, it's that simple. So um, as I said, I hope this helps, uh, especially for the new guys who think they need to go out and spend a shitload of money. You don't. Um, and uh, yeah, I hope you can uh, learn from this video and shoot some awesome soft plastics. All right, guys, that's me. Um, hopefully, I can get another video done uh, in the not too f near future. Um, I'll try not to uh, make it take this long again. But um, yeah, that's it from us for now, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.